bring a phone because we don't really have a lot of room or elsewhere, but what here. are you doing? We're on vacation. <laughs> yes. Vacation. So we're sharing this. <laughs> are you doing this from a phone? I go and I buy like all this like microphone stuff, like a pop filter and everything, and you guys are just like, oh, we're doing it on our phones. Don't care. Hey, it's vacation. We, we weren't thinking we were going to be here at all, as we said before. <laughs> and as, as they have pointed out on our vacation, you are not supposed to plan for vacation. It just <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't anything personal. I I literally just like did a rant to Dave about like equipment and recording like not two minutes ago. <laughs> it's like, well, I have uh, equipment. It's just back at the house where I will have it for the next time I'm on. Well, <laughs> how do how do I how do I sound to you guys? Sound good. Sound good. Your picture looks very fuzzy, but that's uh... well. That's because there's a microphone in front of the. I was just showing off the setup I'll, I'll shut that off ah. but uh yeah so this was a different one it's like everything we've seen so far has had like a lethal cataclysm as part of the plot so it's like okay who are we gonna kill it's like all right mom dies no grandma dies no oh, oh we're killing the little kid okay <laughs> wait what <laughs> <laughs> I was just like watching the whole time, like, all right, something bad's gonna happen. Oh, no, this is, huh. <laughs> no, this is the other Ghibli film that came out in 88. You're thinking Grave of the Fireflies. That's literally the only other Ghibli film I've ever seen. <laughs> That's a depressing one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was very meh. I was like, oh, well, shit. since. Mm. Since I've gotten uh, the, this, col uh, this uh, Ill illegal collection. Um, um, <laughs> I uh, I have watched Laputa, Grave of the Bu uh, 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 Fireflies, Whisper of the Heart, and I'm halfway through Princess Monoka and now Totoro. Oh, so you've seen most of the really good ones. Uh, yeah, I mean, all, um, you've seen the best ones. Uh, for the most part, I guess. Um, uh, this is a 17 illegal film collection, so um. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, um, but uh, let's get this uh, show started if everyone's ready. Um, okay. I figure I'm going to just pull up uh, 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 something real quick. Uh, since I figured, since no, uh, uh, you guys didn't plan uh, on coming on, um, I figured I would, uh, 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 unless Dustin, unless you wanted to, pull a mad hatter and w wanted to because you did choose this film did you want to host um i'll let one of you guys host okay well i'll just pull up um something here really quick oh, god damn it hold on a second <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, my water was so, on the other like, side of this damn room. Nah. To leave so, the mic. hello. Oh, we're starting. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is David Streggy. This is Inside Movies Galore for the uh, last episode in our anime August themed um, month. So. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, tonight we have an exciting family film for uh, 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 for you, uh, which was directed by, uh, by Hayao, uh, Hayao uh, Miyazaki. Miyazaki. Or Miyazaki. Miyazaki. And uh, this film uh, is called My Neighbor Totoro, uh, and it was filmed in 1988. And uh, I'm just going to give uh, IMDb synopsis here. Uh, here. Um, uh, when two girls move to the country to be near their ailing mother, they have adventures with the wondrous forest spirits who live nearby. So um, uh, I'm, uh, I guess um, uh, we have several people here in the room. Uh, uh, so, Brandon, uh, uh, how are you doing? Good, good. 
Uh, Jake, how are you doing? Good. Awesome. And <laughs> Dustin, how are you doing? I'm fine. Okay. okay. Turns out this was a pretty good movie. <laughs> so, well, wow. uh, since you spoke Three. up about it, why don't you tell us your first impressions? Okay. Well, um, I never got, I'd never seen this before, and the only Studio Ghibli movie I had seen was Grave of the Fireflies. So, and on top of that, every movie we've watched for Anime Month has involved some sort of lethal cataclysm, like <laughs> involving well, multiple deaths. <laughs> And uh, so the whole time I was watching this, I mean, I had no idea what to expect. So I was like, OK, who are we going to kill? I'm like, all right. Is it is it that one? Nope. Oh, we're going to kill one of the kids. OK. Oh, wait. It's like, no, this is a happy story. What's going on? <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, there um, I had literally no idea what to expect going in. And I enjoyed it. It's just like a it's just like a pleasant, like family fantasy film. Um, uh, so it's also heavily referenced in this animation or kind of everywhere at large. It's like, I was noticing things. It's like, oh, that's where, why that one scene in Gravity Falls was set up like that. Or, oh, that was the punchline of that joke. Or it's like, hey, that's what Cthulhu sings in South Park. Yeah. The squirrel <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> I didn't know that was a Totoro thing, so... Uh, I mean, I'd seen pictures <laughs> of Satoru, but, and I knew what it was. I just knew nothing else whatsoever about it. But uh, pretty positive impression. So, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my first time experience. If I recall correctly, there was a Totoro stuffed doll in Toy Story 3, wasn't there? I don't know, I maybe. There, I believe there was. Uh, there might have. Um, yeah. but it's sort of uh, funny. So, looking at all the original <laughs> Pokemon, like I can kind of see, I can see like the the point of reference for all of them, except like Snorlax. That's kind of random. And then I saw Totoro for the first time, like when the first scene Totoro appears, and then I'm like, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this was my first time watching this film. Uh, film, um, Bam. and uh, at first. I thought with the English dub, uh, um, the girls were annoying, uh, voice wise. Harsh. Uh, for some re reason, whenever they uh, laughed, like overly la la laughed. But as the story went, uh, uh, story went on, I really enjoyed the fantasy world that the uh, the young girls were were able to uh, imagine and. Uh, during the time of, you know, their mother's uh, so-called ailment, uh, so, uh, so um, I I had relatively positive thoughts about this uh, uh, film. Uh, for uh, for uh, I mean, it was definitely different. I thought that Tortoro was like kind of in between, like uh, having the body of an owl and uh, the face of a cat. So um, it and. Uh, there were actually three torches uh, torch rows, weren't, weren't there? Well, more or less, yeah. You got, <laughs> you got his little mini companions. Yeah, yeah the, the the mini me version, the mid middle yeah, size, the, the Munchlax to uh, <laughs> Toro Snorlax. Uh, but uh, in any case, moving on to uh, um, Jake, why, uh, why, why don't you tell us your first um, impression? All right. Um, I honestly cannot recall exactly how many times I've seen this. I think this makes maybe four. I know the first time I saw it was uh, a few years back. Uh, you might have showed it to me, Brandon. I can't remember. You showed it to me or I might have checked it out. I can't remember. I feel like it was one of the earlier Ghibli films I saw. Um I cannot recall where it fell in the list. Um, it's a, I've always liked it. I've always felt like it's probably a, 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 one of the lesser Ghibli films, but partly that's because it is aimed at, basically it is a kid's film. Uh, it's one of the few 
animated films that I truly love that I consider to be a actual kids film. Uh, but it's just so well done. Um, but it's one that I think this was maybe my first time seeing it in English. Might have been the second. I know I've seen it a couple times in Japanese. Um, both dubs are pretty decent. Um, it's 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 a fun one. And yeah, like Dustin was mentioning, there's so many t- cultural touchstones off of this one. Um, it's kind of... Uh, I think Miyazaki himself has done glancing references to it in his other films. Um, it, at the very least. And like I said, I know there was that Toy Story one. There was that lovely South Park one. Uh, <laughs> there been some- so would you and, uh, say that... The- so would you say that this film is like a cornerstone of uh, uh, Miyazaki's uh, work or uh, uh, something it's, that he references when he goes back to it? Uh, it's an important one. I mean, they do use the the character as the Ghibli emblem. I mean, it is an important one for it. And I feel like, did he do a manga for this? I can't remember. I no clue. I feel like one. he might have. Um, but it definitely is a... Uh, I think yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's kind of a touchstone for Ghibli, I think, and for Miyazaki. And um, yeah, it's a fun movie. I've always okay. liked so. I've enjoyed it. Before I go over to um, Brandon's first impressions, I, I, I wanted to ask uh, uh, both of you, uh, um, what do you think of uh, Studio Ghibli as a whole? Well, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's... Uh, I do think that most American audiences pay a little too much attention to Ghibli. I mean, when when Mirai got an Oscar nod this year, it was a freaking miracle. You know, I mean, Your Name should have gotten one. Summer Wars should have gotten one. Oscar has completely ignored everything that's not Ghibli up until Mirai got the nod. Um, so I think in, in Western uh, audiences tend to be too hung up on Ghibli, but on its own part, it's pretty awesome, and they do do a lot of really good stuff. But, you okay. can tell the South Park guys really love Ghibli. <laughs> yeah, for me, I look at it uh, simply as uh, it's a very quality uh, studio, right. but at the same time, as a double-edged sword, much like Jacob says, I feel like, though it is a, in one sense... Uh, one of the few studios that I feel Americans have uh, taken, um, what's the word, uh, taken seriously. Yeah. Um, and, pardon me, I'm sorry about that. Um, any case, it is a good, uh, I think it's a good and a bad, because I feel like it's the first one they've taken seriously. And on top of that, it is the uh, it is probably uh, one of the things that they didn't take anybody else seriously. Right. Um, yeah. As far as my first impression, I'll get to that first. I've got to then run real quick. Um, it's not my first time. Uh, I watched it really early on in my DVD collecting days, Mononoke and Kiki's uh, delivery service for the first ones I've seen by Ghibli, but I really liked it. Okay. Um, um, moving on. I have seen more than I thought. But I've seen it four times. The Fox dub, the new dub I saw for the first time today, and I've seen it twice in Japanese. All right. I will move it on. Discussion. Just... Okay. Um, going on to the plot. So apparently, uh, so... In the very beginning, uh, we see the uh, the little girls traveling with their their father to a new place uh, that is somewhere uh, somewhere nearby where their mother is ailing away uh, in a nearby ho- uh, hospital. Um, what do we think of the two uh, two little girls? Well, when we were watching it today, I joked that May should have been named Echo. <laughs> <laughs> but 
They, I mean, they were kind of typical little girls. I mean, one's a little, well, I think almost twice the age of the other one. Um, and you know, the, the ones like the little sister that looks up and follows her around and does, but they're mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> Full energy. Okay. So and much what energy. You, <laughs> and what did you think of the, the two little girls, May and Satsuki, um, uh, Dustin? Well, I thought they were pretty believable characters, like the little kid, uh, <laughs> uh, early on, it's like, wow, they have so much energy. I kind of resent them. Because <laughs> uh, I, when I started this today, I was pretty tired. Uh, <laughs> so I'm kind of surprised I didn't black out uh, earlier. But, um, I mean, I thought they were pretty, like, solid characters. Like, uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot of characterization, I guess, you can do with a really young child like that. Um uh, but you know, I I bought I bought their performances, like the voice acting, like as much as I would if I was watching like something live action. So I thought they were really good, uh, and they're given not exactly a lot of dimension, but I don't know this movie kind of delivers on like the ground level. Like you get what you want out of the scenes, so like there wasn't a whole lot. Uh, I'm not sure how to phrase this. Well, they were As they were good char- they were good characters. Like they didn't have a ton of depth, but they didn't really need it. But they were still believable as people that the story experiencing this story and having these things happen to them. So, <laughs> like they were um, good. <laughs> okay. Um, whereas my original thoughts were uh, were that the little girls uh, were annoying at first but th- that was that was because they were doing a lot of yelling um the, i think the, the, they were doing a lot of laughing together they even laughed with their father in one scene that was uh, that uh, it, and it's not that i have a problem with laughing but when when it's too much going on um it does get a little tedious but um that being said i i like dustin said there wasn't really a lot of death who each character, but I, I do believe that there was some death um, oh, yeah. done separately. Done separately. Uh, uh, first on the little girl as she went off into the forest after mini me um, Totoro. Um, <laughs> so that's what we call her mini me Totoro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, uh, what else do you want to call it? Do you want to uh, call it a little ghost gun drop? I think that works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mini, mini me sister versus mini me total. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but real, uh, real, quick, uh, real, uh, real, real quick note though, and Dustin's comment on the um, to- the characterization aspect. Uh, we we talked about Mirai. The protagonist of Mirai is slightly younger than May. And he is very well developed, but the the movie does suffer from the same issue. When you have such a young protagonist, it, it does a lot of the movie, a lot of your um, mileage does depend on your tolerance for yelling and lots of energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think no, they I... do do a fair job of characterizing the girls. Um, you know, they, they give them a little bit of a, with the adventurousness and the, uh, you know, the thing with their mother where they, you know, chose, you know, kind of their family connections and whatnot. Um, yeah. But... Well, and, and I like that the, the family has kind of a, a close knit um, relationship. Oh. Um, oh. Uh, how the father seems to be definitely involved in their life, and he he he, he seems to uh, have a, a humor to him, uh, 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 like when they got uh, when the little girls got scared of the mothballs, uh, and, and the fact that they they made the mothballs kind of a creature. Um, <laughs> uh, it was kind of cute. Um, the sprites. <laughs> the um, 
gremlins or soot gremlins or everyone had a slightly different name for them. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I I liked how the, the 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 family part was fleshed out. Uh, you you could tell that uh, that they were a family that really cared about each other. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. And um, actually, it was kind of funny when we were watching it earlier. We were watching it in the common room uh, where we're staying this week. And uh, a couple of people who weren't familiar with the film were like, where's the mother? I was like, well, you, there's a reason why you don't see her in early scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised but, uh, she was alive. Like, no, no joke. Like, all those other movies, like, just had me, like, ready for something bad. Like, uh. <laughs> It's just like, okay, where's the negativity? Come on. <laughs> Instead, it was yeah, kind of a lighthearted it, it kind of light fantasy. Yeah. Um, so uh, what, once we meet once we meet the character of Pokoro, um, mm-hmm. what do we think of it? Uh, I kept thinking the little girl was gonna fall into its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he comes off at first just like, uh, well, what kind of creature is this? <laughs> <laughs> well, but he's like, I, like I said, I th- I thought that he was like something in between a uh, owl and having like the face of a cat. What do you guys think? It could be like a big <laughs> panda creature that lives in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> panda owl cat. Yes. A very strange creature. I thought it was very intimidating at first just because I didn't know what to make of it. It looked more like a bear to me with the claws. Apparently yeah. uh, apparently the Japanese word for troll is Totoro. And uh, apparently Totoro's name is based on the girls messing up that word and, and mispronouncing it. Which... Uh, I think that's kind of appropriate. Obviously, this is a more whimsical troll than, say, a uh, Shrek type character. You know, <laughs> or like a or like a troll hunter troll. If you guys have seen that, right? <laughs> I, I I I kind of particularly like after the girls give Totoro an umbrella. And then, like, you know, him and his little mini-me's have their little umbrellas and this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so after they try um, it out, they, they really like having them. Right. I thought, that was a kind of a, I thought that was kind of a fun scene when they give him the umbrella uh, and, like, the echo of, like, the rain hitting it. He's like, ooh. And so he's just, like, trying to get raindrops to, like, hit it. <laughs> that was a cute scene. Yeah, that was a fun scene. I like the scene where uh, where the uh, mothballs just blew out the, uh, out the window and you saw them go up into the sky. Which actually, the the soot demons. That's an example of where this film kind of got, uh, where Miyazaki kind of did a slight return. Because I I don't think I'd really thought about this before, but when you think about it, they return exactly as they are in Spirited Away. So I think that was probably a conscious choice on his part to bring them back for Spirited Away. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I always find it interesting how everybody seems to find it uh, lovely to uh, live in a haunted house or how that concept is. I always wanted to live in a haunted house or even the kids. Cool, it's haunted. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. And, <laughs> and whereas his wife had their house exercised. <laughs> I think it would be awesome to live in a haunted house. Even when I was uh, even when, when I was a kid. Scare the shit out of me. Uh, 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 you know? I mean, it, it would have been fun. I mean, at least I wouldn't have been the only ghoul. Well, it could be fun if you if you uh like the idea of screwing with any guests you might have. <laughs> <laughs> Having only a brief experience with uh, actual haunting myself, uh, I will say that it is not necessarily fun. 
Uh, matter of fact, it kind of keeps you up at night. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, um, are there any other characters that we uh, want uh, want to talk about? Uh, maybe. Uh, how about the uh, that that bus that uh, <laughs> that was. Uh, the that cat bus. Cool bus. The cat bus yeah, was like the MVP. Cool bus. <laughs> and uh, that, that was true art design right there, coming <laughs> up with that. I keep thinking of a joke that I came up with, uh, up with because ever since I saw Human Centipede, I, I joke with um, our cat, uh, where where she's got this like uh, centipede, except I call uh, I call it a kitty. Because, uh, because it's hers it, it's like a one of those crinkly toys and, and it looks like a centipede it, it, it's a caterpillar but yeah. i call it a kitty pee oh, yeah. <laughs> the multiple the multiple legs on the cat bus um yeah. which again you see on merchandise everywhere and it's like oh that's what that this is this is what that's from uh, i think was my reaction to the cat bus at first but um the multiple legs reminded me of appa from avatar the last airbender so, uh, I think yeah. that's a. I think that's probably a intentional reference there. It wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, Avatar was pretty awesome, and I'm sure they drew from a lot of good sources. Um, but yeah, I I gotta say though, I'm not sure. I love cats. I'm a cat person, but I would not necessarily trust them as a form of transportation. <laughs> bother me on the cat just like anything else where you have well, the cat with straight out human teeth that just like freaks me out well he has like luminescent rats for his headlights or something oh, like yeah. that the <laughs> smile the smile of Totoro and the smile mm -hmm. of the cat bus reminded me of the Cheshire cat yes yes it's definitely a Cheshire quality there no doubt about that <laughs> So I wonder if uh, that's where they kind of drew some inspiration from. Now, I will say they're both more trustworthy than the Cheshire Cat. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but friendly forest spirits. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, right. so was the Cheshire Cat in a way. <laughs> well, he was friendly, quote unquote, kind of like the friendly <laughs> dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um what do we think about the character of granny oh granny was fun <laughs> so the um although it was her. kind of funny at the beginning i think we, we again we were watching it kind of in a common area and she said something about how she'd been taking care of the house the whole time and I think the reaction was something like, well, what did she do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, falling it apart. is falling apart, yes. And you were just walking by it and looking at it and, and saying that you were. <laughs> she was there to establish a lot of the lore. Well, yeah. She was almost the Greek chorus of the series, of the movie, really. Well, did anybody catch how um, early on she mentions, oh, when I was your age, I could see them too. Yeah. And that kind of established the rules of how these things, of how these spirits worked. Well, it's, oh, go ahead. it's all that uh, concept, if you think about it, is this stuff real that's going on or is this something in their heads? Well, it seems to be, I don't know if this is necessarily a Japanese thing. I feel like this is a kind of a more commonplace but it's kind of the idea that when you're young and your mind is not uh i guess closed in by the world if that makes sense like you can see things because you don't yet disbelieve so it's kind of that sort of notion you know like these kids are still very young and they're still free to imagine that yes hauntings are very real and oh obviously there are soot demons and all this stuff you know what i mean it's well, uh, and, yeah. and children are very impressionable especially when they're very oh, yeah. young 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so when they hear the news that uh, that their mother has taken a turn for the worse, um, yeah. that's when things kind of go a little sideways. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, May, um, what, what, it wasn't it wasn't she going to take some corn to her mother or, was- or something to that effect? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, sh- uh, her sister, uh, because of the argument, they um, she was in a search and frenzy to find her. And that's mm-hmm. when she called upon Tort Otero. Mm-hmm. So uh, what do we think about that sequence of events? The uh, <laughs> well, the uh, they did. There was their attempt to to add a little bit of that that darkness to the story, or a little bit of, I guess you could say, gravitas to the story. Um, and also, apparently, uh, Hayao Miyazaki <coughs> drew from his own life for that. Apparently, his mother, his mother suffered, according to this, his mother suffered from spinal tuberculosis for nine years and spent a good deal of time in the hospital. And they never really say in the film that it's tuberculosis, but it's kind of implied, you know, kind of, sort of. Um, but basically, uh, I guess, instead of him and, and maybe a brother... Uh, they he made girls to make it less personally painful, um, but definitely drew from his own life for that. For that, um, okay. I think also that might have been one of the reasons why the film is more positive and upbeat. Again, kind of make it a little less uh, personal. But um, yeah, that whole sequence does get a little dark. But it does, uh, you know, of course it works out, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and what's there's inter- nowhere near as dark as the companion films. <laughs> well, what's interesting is that we have already um, discussed a film of his before. Um, we discussed A Loop in the Third Castle, yep. Cagliope. Yeah. So, what do you think about the contrast between uh, Cagliostro, which uh, came out in 1979, and the animation in uh, this feature, My Neighbor Totoro, which came out in 1988? Oh, That's... it seems it seems like the animation has had definitely like improved in a decade. Uh, right. Like we had, I remembered more detail, like, and then being able to kind of, I guess, do more with it. Like you could have right. a little bit better, like camera coverage. Uh, I, I bet, Brent, I'm not an anime guy, so I bet Brandon and Jake have a way better way to phrase that than I do. Well, I think you're right that it definitely animation, from what I've seen, I've seen very little from the 70s. Uh, Cagliostro is one of the few. But what I've seen almost consistently, the 80s was better than the 70s for animation. Um, but also in the 70s, he was basically a director for hire yeah. for a movie that was based on a long-running series uh, or it was a, about to be a long-running series but was already becoming a popular franchise. Yeah. And this one was more of a, like, his studio, his, uh, he had more control, more, you know. It was still kind of a fledgling studio, because this and Grave of the Fireflies were basically the second releases. Uh, Castle of the Sky was basically the first. So they didn't have an enormous budget. Hmm? I really like Castle of the Sky, uh, which was a Oh, Oh, I love that one. Uh, I mean, keep in mind, uh, I mean, just as he said, with uh, Lupin the Third, there's, uh, whenever you're doing an animation uh, on a, a franchise, you've mm-hmm. got to look at the style 
mm-hmm. that you are uh, that the person is drawing characters in. And right. though you could see some of uh, Miyazaki's art in some of the alternative characters throughout, he still had to stick to that basic art style for the main recognizable characters. Mm-hmm. Lupin, Jigen, these characters. Uh, if you see a movie based off of a series, a lot of that animation is done as close to the art style of the comic of the uh, mainstay series as it can. So really and truly, you're going from uh, partial creative control to full creative control. Right. So I think the uh, the animation definitely was a step up, uh, from, you know, but it probably is nowhere near where Ghibli would get later on. I mean, you know, some of their later ones. Um, Actually, know, Princess Mononoke is a good example. Mononoke, yes, yes. Spirited, yeah. Spirited Very Away nice. is a visually gorgeous film. You know, there are some later ones that upped a bit. But, um, yeah, the... Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Never mind. <laughs> But, okay. Um, moving on to um, what do we think of the uh, now? Granny has a grandson, correct, or a nephew? Something uh, on the, the yeah. Neighbor. He um, he doesn't necessarily do a whole lot like actively. Like I, well, I don't know. He has he has a role in the story, but I don't remember anything particular about his character other than. You know, he likes the older girl. He yeah. likes her, but is scared shitless of like her. Like, afraid to talk to her. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean... Yeah. yeah. He reminded me of a younger version of the older child from A Grave of the Fireflies, design-wise. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe that's what happens. Maybe when... Uh, when he gets older, he, he'll get like a sister, and uh, that, that's maybe this is the past. This is a uh, prequel. I, <laughs> no, this is clearly, no, this is clearly set in contemporary times, so though. It wasn't a period piece, really. Well, the, uh, incidentally, and great, great, you know, I kind fire of fire. alluded to this. Great kind of fire alluded fire. to this. Yeah. Go ahead. This was a double bill. With Grave of the Fireflies. Grave of the Fireflies was by Ghibli co founder Isao Takahata. And he and Miyazaki, they tried to do that for their swan songs as well for Wind Rises and uh, The Tale of the Princess Kagi, and it didn't happen. But this was a double bill. The two films were released on the same day, on the same ticket. And supposedly, those who came to see the one that started with Totoro mostly did not stay to see Grave of the Fireflies. But those that came to see Fireflies first almost all stayed to see Totoro. And I don't really blame them because I love Grave of the Fireflies, but it would be nice to have a upbeat, cheerful movie to follow. <laughs> Gotta have a palate cleanser there <laughs> yes. somewhere. <laughs> They're very yeah. different. Unlike, I'm like I'm like earlier this year when on um, the last drive-in with Joe Bob, like they played Wolf Cop, which is like a fun like horror comedy, and then they followed that with Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, and it was just like the most buzz crashing thing of all time. <laughs> um, I mean, I'd imagine it would be like that. Although then again, I personally think Grave of the Firefly sucks, so I would have left too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I, I do. I mean, I rated it as my top film of, you know, I I think it's a really, really good film. But, and I know he hates it, Brandon. And I, but, uh, it's definitely not a happy go lucky film. There's no two ways about it. And I still remember my utter shock of a Japanese friend telling me that she had grown up with Grave of the Fireflies. And I'm like, yeah, that's a great show. Really? A great movie what? show your child. <laughs> um, I, but I, mean, I, guess I got to see Alien when I was four. I mean, it's not that, not that bad. Well, actually, the Raven Fireflies was meant to be seen by children. It was. Because it was. it was meant as a piece to tell children. It was a piece to basically tell contemporary children, this is how you're supposed to act. 
do not act like the older child. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was a, you're not supposed to act. It there was basically go. a it was basically a society piece. It was a preachy piece, and to me, that that lost it. I I do still appreciate the art in Grave of the Fireflies. I don't hate it. I would never watch it again. Learning it's, it's a film. It's a film. I tell people you, it's one that you should watch, but only once. And you get everything that you need out of it the first time. Anything else is just torturing yourself. That just doesn't make sense. See, I disagree, but whatever. <laughs> learning, learning myself that the uh, that the entire fi film was actually based on um, tr a, a true story. Um, My neighbor in, Totoro. In, no, um, the well. Uh, as um what as um Jake said, uh, said there was a, uh, there was something that was based on a true story in this uh, in in Totoro right uh, he had a mother but there were some uh, elements taken from life um Miyazaki I'm, does that a lot he'll he'll draw from reality without doing something that's really based in reality I'm you know it's kind of right? Fireflies. Yeah. Well, that was not exactly a true story either because the older kid who died, well, they both die, but the older one is based on the one who wrote the book that the movie's based on. So he obviously survived and wrote the yeah. book, but they changed it a little bit for the film. But it's, um, yeah, they're both, they're both fun, but like I said, very different. Um, but as far as this one goes, I guess did we uh, we talked about the animation. What do y'all think of the music? Oh, the music was uh, cool. Like it had good music. Yeah, it's iconic. Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, again, that Totoro song was so lovely, spoofed in South Park. It's oh become... my god, yes. <laughs> I actually uh in our in our uh, pre-show chat like Brandon you shared that and I've been busy like pretty bad, badly all week so I actually didn't see that and so when the t t when the t t t t well when the song started to play it was like it totally caught me by surprise and I was like that's what that was referencing oh okay and then I saw it's like oh Brandon put it in the chat all right I don't have to share this myself now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the. Uh, I, I don't see a lot of South Park, but I saw that episode. And when they played that, I was sitting there going, <laughs> oh my God, I haven't enjoyed South Park this much since the movie. <laughs> but uh, they follow it by killing Justin Bieber. <laughs> well, what that played us. <laughs> but. Yeah, and then the general music, of course, uh, one thing about Ghibli is they have an in-house musician. Uh, Joe Hisaishi has done the music on almost all their films. And the main exception, the glorious exception, is The Secret World of Varietti. But Hisaishi does a very good job. He's a very good uh, composer. And um, I, I like his work on this one, definitely. It, it, it fits, I think. And uh, the Japanese and the uh, English dub of it, yeah. it's musically, it's not all that different. Um, when you, I mean, I've listened to them back to back. They and they job. sound very, very yeah. similar. So you hear one, you'll hear the other one's mm -hmm. tones and basic, basic mm -hmm. concepts coming through. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, it's not like some of the other ones. Like a, a good example, uh, Kiki's Delivery Service. Now they did away with this later on uh, when Disney took over. Uh, but Kiki's Delivery Service and um, gosh, what was the one about the uh, that cat returns? The other one, Whispers of the Heart. Whispers of the Heart. Uh, they actually had uh, original music written for the English dubs, which was. Pretty cool in and of they itself. They did that for Whisper of the Heart. There was one in it. I can't remember what the title was. Why? They used English stuff at the beginning. Yeah, well. 
That's weird. Um, again, this is this is I think it's Fox or somebody I can't remember who had it, but uh, the as far as the other one, um, uh, there were two songs, and I actually really love the songs that they used for Kiki's Delivery Service. Mm-hmm. So it's the only reason why I keep the old dub of it, mm-hmm. uh, much like I keep the Fox dub of this because it's an entirely different dub, and they and supposedly if I wanted to watch them back to back, the uh, newer dub. Yeah. Is actually different in tone, t- different tonally than the uh, older dub, and there are many people who actually prefer the older dub. He prefers the uh, Japanese. Well, especially because <laughs> of something that amuses me. Of course, being anime fans, we're big fans of Rumiko Takahashi, and about the time this show came out, she had one series, the best series ever, Mesa Nikoku, had just ended. And Ranma One Half was just about to begin. The the lead female love interest in Meizo Nikoku, Sumi Shimamoto, or, or no, Kyoko Tanashi is played by Sumi Shimamoto. She plays the mother. And the lead female love interest in Ranma One Half, Akane Tendo, is played by Noriko Hidaka, who plays Satsuki. So the mother and the older daughter are played by those. I just thought that was kind of amusing. But the English dub is notable because it's Dakota and Elle Fanning playing the daughters. And has, have they done any other movies together? If they haven't, they should. But I just find that kind of interesting, too. Um, hmm. Elle, in particular, has become a very notable actress over the over the years. And yeah. So, anyway. And this was her voice, that first voice acting credit. She was probably, what, like six when they did this? I don't know. She was young. Anyway. I find it interesting that there was a live-action version of The Grave of the the Butterflies. Yeah, it's hard to find. I've never seen it. Yeah. um, Well, I wonder why it would be hard to find. It seems like something you kind of of want to bury. (laughs) Most live action Japanese stuff is hard to find. I really want to see the live action Kiki's Delivery Service, but I've never found it. Yeah, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an interesting thing to look at those, and you really can see the difference between Miyazaki and uh, Takahata, I believe it was. He's on Takahata. Uh, yeah. And you can see the difference in their styles, even at the beginning. Uh, mm-hmm. So it is kind of interesting to look at the contrast, though I much prefer the contrast of the Princess Kaguya and the Wind Rises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're both good times. Alrighty, so um, uh, did we look at the production values at all? I mean, I think it? we covered that. I think we covered that when we talked about the animation okay. um, quality because. I mean, the production value on, like, most anime is just in, you know, like, how much effort they put into it. And this movie just looks great. I mean, I can't, uh, I can't quite think of any ever way to describe it. Uh, like, there is, since we should probably do favorites uh, pretty soon, I think maybe my favorite sequence was uh, after they give Totoro the umbrella. Uh, <coughs> he gives them, like, a bunch of acorns, and they plant them, and they're waiting for them to grow. And one night, Totoro and some of the smaller Totoros come out, and they do this thing where they basically magically pull, like, the seedlings out of the ground, and they grow into huge trees, like, immediately. Uh, And that whole sequence was, like, extremely cool and very well done, technically. So, I have to... Everything about this movie was just great. Like, it's... It's it's kind of cliche sounding, but it's really true. It's like I, I see why this was so popular for so long now. You so, know, I have, to, I have to take a moment to point out that this is three anime in a row that you've given a very positive review to. <laughs> well, again, the before I started watching the anime that you guys were suggesting, I mean, all the anime I was seeing was just you know like Sword Art Online or whatever dumb crap my one friend likes 
That's right. SAO we, had its moments, but it also had reasons for people to hate it. I will oh admit. Gosh. Well, and we uh, and the memes are the problem. memes are not kind to Sword Art Online. Like, well, uh, you either love it or you hate it. That's the only two people for Sword Art Online. Sounds like most people hate it. Uh, but, but I mean, they, this also was picked by the anime community. A lot of them because we had lots of these right. uh, anime fan groups that helped uh, pick these four this time around, which is very cool. Good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. I agree with you on that. My favorite scene was uh, the where they were waiting on the bus. But I like that whole sequence yeah. from the start where it was very creepy as it was getting dark, and they'd have the the bicycle just ride by in the middle of the night, and you just have the two girls in the middle of nowhere sitting there waiting for that bus. And then, of course, the cat bus showing up after right. the... It's just uh, all of that happening in the same... There's all that cool stuff. A little bit of suspense and a little bit of, of just awesome fantasy at the same time. Not to mention just Totoro just kind of showing up and just chilling, you know, having it... Just waiting for the bus like a regular person. <laughs> <laughs> I was amused by that. But yeah, I agree with Dustin. I like that dance they did over the garden. That was really fun, too. That was uh, just, that was fun. And I feel like it was one other moment I wanted to mention. <laughs> some of the highlights there. I think we'll go with that. If I think of when, I saw, when I saw that, uh, I don't know why, but, uh, but, uh, but when I saw that, uh, sequence when they were dan uh, uh, when, uh, when they were uh, uh, getting up and uh, waving their arms up and uh, down. I kept thinking to myself, uh, what Pooh Bear uh, 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 was singing: uh, "Up, down, touch the ground." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I mean, if it makes trees erupt out of the ground, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's like okay. it's like the fusion dance. Like the chant can be stupid. But as long as it works, worth it. <laughs> Man, now y'all have the Heffalump song stuck in my head, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not it's doing that ridiculous that. dance to become a godlike being for a half hour. <laughs> that yeah, was a phenomenal Winnie the Pooh song, though. <laughs> that was, you, uh, I, was, I was telling Dragon Ball Z jokes, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you uh, look at Zaki's <laughs> work, that song. <laughs> Pink elephants on parade. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you look at Miyazaki's work, nature is always a front runner. Yeah. Or it has some involvement. Uh, I mean, he has always been known for his love of the environment and protecting the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, which you know, for people who are not very environmentally conscious, this can become preachy in some of the films, like say Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind. Um, but yeah. the uh, the concept of you know how precious nature is and how amazing nature is is throughout all of it. And then Totoro is no exception in that. And actually, Miyazaki does have a, the the love and appreciation for nature is one of his uh, through lines. Another one is his obsession with flight. <laughs> and you do have that part with the flying dreidel, which I was find it kind of oh, interesting. Yeah. But like. You, you always have someone flying somewhere in a Miyazaki film. That seems to always be a thing. And, um, yeah. And really, and really creepy old ladies that are usually really nice. Uh, <laughs> that seems to be a thing. <laughs> Interesting. Well, yep. in any um, is there anything else that anyone would like to bring up about uh, this particular film before we? Uh, uh, I, I think we've covered all the bases. Yeah. Uh, if for some reason you have been holding out on seeing My Neighbor Totoro, you know, go see it. Uh, like, it's just great. You know, uh, I kind of wish I had a deeper level of commentary to offer here, but I don't like my... I don't know, it, it was good. Just go <laughs> so, uh, I'm that And then go know. watch Godzilla. <laughs> which I'm going to do very soon, and I'm so excited. 
<laughs> so, um, Dustin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Right, that's me. Uh, well, uh, I live here in Milwaukee, and I'm a horror collector. Uh, I have a channel for uh, unboxings, collections, and I've been trying to start doing reviews, too. Uh, I am the Crypt of Horrors here on YouTube, and that's also my Twitter handle, where I'm hanging out far too frequently these days. Uh, so you can interact with me there. I have an Instagram for the horror collection, too. Uh, also, the Crypt of Horrors. Um... And I'm looking to start my own dedicated horror podcast pretty soon, so uh, that should be fun. A uh, lot, lot going on. Too much going on. <laughs> Stop me. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, moving on to uh, Brandon. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? Well, uh, I'm Septim Sen of Septim Sen vs. the World. Uh, we are a uh, YouTube channel dedicated to the collection and appreciation of physical media, uh, be that through reviews, uh, top 10 lists, uh, or other various things such as pickup or uh, uh, upcoming release uh, news. We try to uh, show that appreciation in every step of the way with our channel. Upcoming this week, we do have a movie review for Cult of the Shadow People, uh, which has been filmed and ready to go. So that's something fun to look forward to for the rest of the weekend. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. But uh, that was... Um, and that's uh, it for this for mine. <laughs> okay. Um, going over to Jake, why don't you tell us a little bit about show and what you do? All right, I'm Jake. I'm also a uh, big time movie, DVD, CD, B what have you collector. I uh, got a little carried away with it today, as a matter of fact. Uh, <laughs> I'm going hurting for that one. But uh, at any rate, the uh, and I also frequently guest on Septum Sin versus the World. Uh, as he said, we have an assortment of fun uh, videos headed your way in the near and foreseeable future. Um, I also have my own channel, Kotobuki Jake, that is de devoted to nature and the natural world. Very poorly updated, but I have some very good reason to believe there'll be some videos coming up in the next week or so, because I have been seeing some pretty cool nature in the last few days and I feel like I need to turn a couple of those observations into videos and I'm looking forward to it uh, so look forward to that yourselves and um, otherwise I do have a hub pages Kotobuki Jake as well doesn't get updated much, but check it out. It's got some good stuff. And I'll do it for me. <laughs> oh, uh, one, uh, one more thing before we turn it over to you, Dave. Um, don't forget, September is going to be Supernatural September yes. uh, with our starting movie for next week, The Craft. Yes. And uh, stay tuned because we will have a new recruit. Yay. I don't have a lot. We do. But, uh, yeah, uh, we'll have someone else coming uh, uh, coming on with us. Um, oh. That is a mystery guest. Oh, um, yes. uh, for now. <laughs> so uh, stay uh, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, for an so, exciting episode. Arrival will be destroyed. I see. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. Um, uh, Let's see what the episode brings us. So, uh, in any case, light as a feather, stiff as a board. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Is that what I, I haven't gotten to see it yet. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, for a uh, great discussion. Stay tuned. All right. You're still recording, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs>